Welcome to Zcast, everyone. I'm Zias Caravalla from ZK Research, and I'm here inside the World of Solutions, uh, the Expo Hall at Cisco Live 2025 in San Diego. I'm with Jorge Ramirez, who's uh, Global Head of Automation and a few other things at General Motors. Thank you. Thanks yeah. for having me. Yeah. Uh, just uh, a quick intro on yourself. That's a big title. Must be a big job as well. Yeah. So one of the things I do, uh, you know, a lot of people ask me, what do I do, right? Uh, so um, the global director of automation, it basically, it takes care of all the conveyors, takes care of all the PLCs, all the stuff that makes the line physically run. The other half of my job is the chief manufacturing cybersecurity officer, right? So the very tools that I buy and the equipment that I procure and install is the very things that I also then have to secure from a cybersecurity perspective. So, so that's a big job. Big, big role. That's an interesting combination yep. too. And so this is your first Cisco Live, you said? First Cisco Live, first yeah. timer. And how'd you find it? Uh, really uh, nice, right? Because I had never been here. I heard about it uh, many times. Uh, uh, our partners uh, always invited me to them. So it wasn't a function of I wasn't invited. It was just I had never made it. I finally made it. Yeah, so I've been here as a customer partner and an analyst. And I think this is maybe number 25 for me. 25? For yeah, Very I, nice. I first started coming on those networkers. And so All right. uh, any initial thoughts? What do you think of the keynote? There was a lot of stuff in there, right? Uh, it was good. Uh, good. Good to see the technology that's actually being rolled out and that's going to be used by customers, right? Uh, I, I I already have some plans, right? And I've talked to uh, I talked to our account managers to say, how do how do I leverage some of this stuff, right? To at the end of the day, to enable us to be more uh, agile and, and quick, right? Uh, with the technologies that are coming out. Yeah. Well, that's certainly the name of the game, right? And uh, and and I'm curious, you know, how long have you been in the role? I've been in this role for uh, six years. Six years, been, and with GM? I've been with GM for 35 plus years. Oh, okay, wow, okay, so a company man. So, yes, a company man. Uh, so when I think about the environment you're in today, uh, there's a lot of stuff going on, right? We got AI, everything's moving to the cloud, we got global macro issues. How is the, what are your challenges like today compared to even three, four years ago? So yeah, so if you look, uh, I mean, right now, the environment is changing very, very quickly. There's a lot of introduction of new technology, uh, of new capabilities, but at the same time, I have a lot of legacy equipment that's still left behind, right? Because it still works, it still operates. So it's the meshing of these two worlds, the old and the new. The old and the new. Right, and how does how does it work, right? Uh, and how do you make this orchestration happen, right? The, the, older, the, the older OSs, the older what have you, with the new stuff, right? So, even four years back, and, and you warp to four years forward now, right, it's just the introduction of automation and the introduction of technology is coming at a very fast pace. Yeah, yeah. in fact, uh, Raj Chopra, you know Raj, runs security for Cisco, he said to me, what's going on right now is the slow pace of rapid innovation, Yeah. and that everyone knows they need to change. Uh, you've got an eye on the future, but you've got so much of the core stuff that you need to run every day, yeah. And yes. So that presents a challenge, yeah. right? Just we got to be quick, right? Uh, but you still can't throw the baby out with the bathwater, yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah, and talk about the relationship with Cisco. How, how have they helped you migrate through some so of these challenges? So it was interesting because when I took over this role, uh, you know, six years ago, uh, and they said, you're going to work with Cisco, I was like, why am I working with an IT company? I, I work in manufacturing, right? Um, so we gave it a shot. We partnered up. Uh, we worked on some. Uh, we worked on. Uh, we started out on a very aggressive project, to be quite honest, right? Um, and we did a ton of learning, right? They learned what it means to operate and work with a manufacturing OT environment. We learned what it means to work with a company that was more IT centric, right? But we've since have blended, uh, and we have the right. Uh, I'll call it. We have the right partnership in mind that we've. we've uh, we did fail on that first aggressive project, but we. Did did a lot of learning because of it, and it's okay. Right? Sometimes failing right? is okay, right? If failing is okay because yeah. we did a lot of learning, and, and you move quick, faster, right? Um, but now, like I said, now uh, I'm gonna take credit that uh, we we pushed Cisco to, to develop two products that they've entered, one that got introduced in this very session. Oh, can you say which one that is? The uh, 3100, I believe, is what it's called. The, oh yeah, okay, yep, yeah, the little, yeah, the little block. Yeah, the yeah, the block. industrial, the industrial uh, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That well, that's an that's an interesting space because. You can't just put run-of-the-mill products in there because there's so much, you know, dust and other things. That, yeah, you you gotta, know. everything has to be industrialized. Yeah, and so if, as you um, think about your your job and the challenges ahead of you, uh, right, everyone in the IT industry now talks about platformization, uh, rationalization of vendors, making it simpler. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? So yeah, so. Um, 
So that is sort of one of the, the challenges also that we face, right? As, as new technology comes up, right, we got to make sure that the new technology is intuitive and easy to use, right? Uh, um, you Which has not historically been the way it is. not historically, yeah. right? The technology is designed by engineers, for engineers. I'm saying you got to design technology for the normal person to be able to operate, right? Uh, um, and as you look into the future, that's one of the things that we're working on with, uh, you know, with our partner is, you know, the back engine can be as complex as it can for engineers, but the front end that the, uh, the the operator has to interface with has to be very intuitive and has to be very simple to set up. Yeah, and are you finding Cisco's doing a better job of that? Uh, we're working through it. Uh, yeah. In some cases, yes. In some cases, I think we still have opportunities, but I think it's just the industry in general, right? Uh, is We haven't quite gotten there, right? And, and even ourselves within GM, right? We sometimes overcomplicate things uh, because we're engineers, and by yeah. nature, it makes sense to us, but in the end, the end user doesn't really need all the data that we think engineers want to see. Yeah. Yeah, well, no, that's true, but I... The engineers like that. It gives them comfort, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. And and how do you see the uh, partnership evolving over the next few years? So once again, now uh, you know, just finished talking to, to Cisco uh, prior to coming here, and, and we're looking at you know how do we continue to evolve the partnership? How do we continue to co-develop? Uh, is the best way to do it, right? So that uh, so that as we're coming up with whatever the next best widget is, right? Uh, it's already has our thoughts in place, baked in, so that it's not something that hopefully maybe it'll stick. It's something that it's something that we, I absolutely love because I was part of the, uh, the core development with them. Okay, yeah. And George, I wouldn't be doing my job as an IT analyst if I didn't ask you your thoughts on AI, right? AI. Every, everyone talks about AI. Yeah. What, and so from a company, what do you, What's GM thinking about doing it? And specifically within your area of responsibility, how do you see AI being used to help you and your team do their jobs better? So it's there, right? In my space, I can tell you we, we have over 30 plus projects that are uh, leveraging AI to some capability. Yeah, some people uh, have said it's easier to tell you what we're not using AI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, but I think the end goal is going to be, you know, how do you leverage that technology to enable you to be fast, flexible, and frugal, right? Let it do the, the mundane. Flexible. The mundane work needs to be done by some of these applications, right? Uh, and even some of the, some of the, uh, I'll call it tougher challenges, you know, leverage the technologies to do the heavy lifting, um, because it, it's it's coming. I think it's only going to grow, and it's just going to get, uh, it's just going to get something that is going to be here with us to stick for a while. So yeah. we got to figure out how do we leverage it. And are you actually using it today? Yes. Yeah. And what are some of the mundane? Things that's uh, for example, you're uh, the good old days. You know, uh, it's interesting because a lot of companies, uh, you know, run run the company using Excel spreadsheets. Yeah. Right? <laughs> if Excel goes away, who knows what will happen to yeah. us? But some of that stuff, I think, uh, that's you not know, going away. Yeah. Peer, peer, uh, you know, pierce through a bunch of data so that it can actually give you information where you can now, no kidding, make a true decision versus relying on my intuition of going through all this data that takes hours and then making a decision, right? Being able to change the inputs so that it can parse through the data and tell me, you know, a sensitivity analysis of if, I, if it's plus this, minus that, what does that mean? Yeah, in fact, like the way I've described it is, if you think of the internet, it democratized access to information, AI is democratizing access to expertise. Correct. And so now you don't need, if you want to do analytics on data, it can do it for you. Yeah. How about you personally? Do you use it in your day to day? Uh, every now and then, yeah. I'm getting I'm getting more better. used to it. Yeah. Uh, right. To be honest, I'm still. Um, I've noticed it does a, a way better job of writing something eloquent versus yeah. my writing. So every now and then, I'll take a sentence and say, "Can you make this better?" Right. Yeah. Uh, it's like, but I use it. I use it more. I don't use it as often as I probably should. Yeah. Well. Uh, I, I guarantee in a couple of years you will. So, uh, I, yeah, just one last question. So, when you look out in the future, since you know you do have a, a security responsibility and a lot of technology, is there uh, other than AI? Are there any other technologies out there that you're really excited about that you think are going to really change the way you do your job? Oh boy, yeah. I think once again, when you look at our, uh, uh, into the future, at least in my crystal ball, I think the you know what we do with networks is going to be critically important because we continue to we continue to add and add and add to the network so how we manage the network and you know it's at the end of the day it's the nervous system that connects yeah. all this equipment right so how we manage the network and, and how we're able to pile on these technologies to it I think is going to be very critical and important it sort of excites me to be quite yeah. so I recently did a survey that found 
uh, I think it was all CIOs, and uh, something like 93% said the network is more important to business operations years ago, but about 85% said it's more complex. So that's an interesting dichotomy, right? And it is, right? Yeah. And that's why I said we got to work with partners like Cisco to be able to figure out how do we simplify that so that the operator that's running the network doesn't have to be a network engineer, All right. right? It's yeah. intuitive. Yeah, it's intuitive. All right. Uh, anything else you want to add? No, thank you for having me. I appreciate the time. No, thank you for your time. I certainly appreciate having you on. Uh, so on behalf of uh, George Ramirez from General Motors, I'm C.S. Caraval from ZK Research, and thanks for watching. Uh, see, we're getting some applause as well. Yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah, give <laughs> us a like, hit the subscribe button. I'll see you next time on the next episode of Zcast. Thanks, George. Thank you.